It's that time again, boys and girls. We've got another fight card, another full card for predictions for me to break down. Brandon Allen versus Paul Craig. This is honestly not a main event that I would have expected to see this year. Probably because I picked against both of them in their last fights that kind of pushed them into this bout. 470 UFC fights on the year, 311 wins, and went 11 and 2 on last week's card. So pretty solid overall, except, of course, lost another main event pick. Fucking Chama. I swear. I was so close, man. But you know what? It is what it is. It was November 11th. I got 11 fights right. Kind of feels fitting. Moving on up the card, though, to kick this shit off. Charles Johnson taking on Rafael Estevam. Estevam is coming off of his TKO win in the second round on Dana White's Contender Series earlier in the year. He kind of just got a takedown and was landing ground and pound. It's what he does in a lot of his fights. And Charles Johnson is coming off of two losses back-to-back. One's a split decision to Ode Osborne that I felt like was... I don't know, kind of bullshit, but maybe you can give it to him. And then one was just a domination by Cody Durden, who I also sadly picked Charles Johnson against, and he just got ragdolled. I, you know, usually, just based on, like, paper, Charles Johnson is a little bit better of a striker, better of a grappler, but I can't trust him anymore, so I'm actually going to go with Rafael Estevam by a decision. Moving on, we've got Trey Ogden taking on Nicholas Mata. Nicholas Mata used to be on a tear back in the day, and then in his last fight, he got blitzed, and I'm glad I picked against him because I just had a feeling that he wouldn't be able to do that well. Trey Ogden has only really lost, if I'm not mistaken, to the Monkey King, who's fighting later on the card, Jordan Levitt. And that was like a big grappling attack that I don't think Nicholas Mata would be able to keep up with. I think Trey Ogden hits harder. I think he has a better gas tank. I think he's tougher. He just is more of a fighter. So I'm going to trust Trey Ogden to go in there and maybe get a TKO. Moving on up the card, Lucy Pudilova versus Halen Perez. All right, this one can either make or break. My first three fights of the night. I, because I'm confident in the first two, decently enough. This one, I'm going to side with Aylin Perez, but like, Lucy Putilova has, she, she, I honestly think she's just a better fighter overall, but I don't think she's looked as good lately against certain competition. The only thing that screws me over when it comes to wanting to pick Aylin Perez is that she got subbed by, Je- by Stephanie Egger, and that just doesn't look good, but I'm going to side with Aylin Perez. Moving on, Jekka Saragi taking on Lucas Alexander. If you guys remember this dude, he was the one that took on Steven Peterson earlier in the year and kind of blasted him. He looked technical, but he also just didn't look like he had enough tools in the toolbox, per se. And he also kind of looks like he needs to slap some muscle on that uh, 145 frame. Oh, we go, okay, we got another catchweight, actually. This one's going to be at 148 pounds. Seems like they've been doing that a lot lately to try to get fights together. Not mad at it at all. This is a 14-fight card for a fight night. That's pretty solid. Lucas Alexander is just more crisp on the feet. Jekka didn't even win the tournament that was supposed to get him into the UFC, and he's still here. He lost to Antrel Jubilee, and that dude sucks, so you gotta go, Lucas. Then we have Mick Parkin taking on Kyle Machado. This is gonna be a good fight, in my opinion. Almost two undefeated heavyweights, and Kyle has one loss, but... Mick Parkin, undefeated in heavyweight in both pro and amateur. He's actually solid. Um, I don't remember who it is he trains with exactly, but he trains with a solid fighter as well. Uh, One of the greats, so... I'm going to side with Mick Parkin. I mean, I probably would have regardless, but I went back and watched some of Kyle Machado's fights earlier, and yeah, no, it just doesn't look like he's good enough to take on my boy. Moving on up the card, Christian Leroy Duncan taking on Dennis Tolulin. Speaking of not good enough, D- Christian Leroy Duncan let me down in his last fight against Petrosian. It's okay. It's not like the worst opponent, but you know, let me down, even though he like thought he won for some reason. This fight should be something more of a cakewalk, more akin to an easy night at the the office. Christian Leroy Duncan is probably going to come in here wanting to make amends for his last bout and, you know, just put himself back out there in the name of the fans, especially for the UK MMA scene. So I'm not mistaken, he debuted with all of them like last year, this year or something. Yeah, I'm going to have to side with Christian Leroy by a TKO. Then we got Chad and Helliger taking on Jose Johnson. I'm going to lean with Jose Johnson. Chad and Helliger just looks like somebody that will get punched in the face hard. And obviously, I'm not just <laughs> I'm not just making the pig based on how his face looks. I've seen his fights. If you want to like, also just look at his record: twelve and six. Jose Johnson fifteen and eight. They have terrible records. I can see why this fight was put. It's probably going to be like loser gets cut. Winner is on like thin ice in the UFC. I'm going to go with Jose Johnson. He has a massive frame for the division. He's like six foot. That's just all you really need in this type of matchup. Moving on up the card: Jonathan Pierce taking on Joe Anderson Brito. I don't need to say too much about this one. Jonathan Pierce, JSP, 
I feel like he was just given matchups similar to a lot of featherweights in this sport. For some, it's actually a, really a lot of featherweights now that I think about it. They just get really, really simple matchups for their style. Um, who, Damon Jackson. He looks like trash now, but for the longest, he was killing everybody in featherweight. I feel the same about Jonathan Pierce. And he's fighting someone like Joe Anderson Brito who would murk most of the people that he beat in like the first round. He would take people that John took to a decision and probably will kick their head off. Joe Anderson Brito is a beast. His only loss right now, and to my knowledge, is to Bill Algio, and it was like a clinch fest. So I'm going to have to side with Joe Anderson. Then we got Euros Medic taking on, all right, I'm going to butcher this, Midibek Orulbai. I doubt that's how it's pronounced because it's like M-Y- KTY Beck, but you know what? Midi Beck or will buy. This dude looks like he's missed a couple software updates for uh, our species, <laughs> so that automatically wants to make me want to pick him. But I picked against Eros Medic last time out, and he looked really crisp on the feet. Unless this guy is actually some caveman update freak of nature, I'm gonna still have to side with Eros Medic. This is a card of redemption. I'm picking against people that have let me down, and I'm picking people that I should have trusted in the past. When it all crashes when you get to this one, Luana Pinero, my bae, taking on Amanda Rebos. Luana Pinero earned herself a new fan when she fought Michelle Watterson, ro- uh, Michelle Watterson Gomez and robbed her in broad daylight. At the time watching it, I remember thinking that she won. I've watched it back. It, it was kind of clear that she didn't win. I think I was just blinded by uh, her her Brazilian beauty because that's honestly my new girlfriend. Like I'm flying out to Brazil or some shit. I can't pick against her because I'm a loyal man. Even though I do think Amanda Rebess might win. So I'm going Luana. Next up, Peyton Ta- Tabo taking on Nick Aguirre. Or Aguirre. Yeah, Nick Aguirre. Sorry, I think I murked that last time around. I'm going to have to go with Peyton Tabo. I watched his six fights. He murks people on the feet. And you could tell that the UFC want to get him in here with a quick, easy, fresh matchup. Nick Aguirre or Aguirre. Who only fought once at the beginning of the year and lost his undefeated record. So, I mean, I don't see him being in here much longer if he gets put out bad, too. Peyton Talbot, he just looks really good with that one-two. Like, really, really crisp. Powerful as well. Look for that one-two. I think he's going to knock him out with it. Feature fight of the night. Chase Hooper taking on Jordan Levitt. This is a great fight, in my opinion. This is the type of fight that both of these people need. Um, Chase Hooper is way, way bigger than I thought he was. I saw them way off. Dude, he's... Jordan Levitt was, like, looking up at him. It was kind of crazy. And it, it makes me realize... I see why Chase Hooper is, like, the minus 200 favorite. It might have changed a little bit, but I'm pretty sure he's like a he's like a two to one favorite right now. And I'm still picking Jordan Levitt. He's stronger. He's been in the MMA game longer. He trains with dogs. He trains with Sean Strickland's team. If you just train with Strickland alone, I have like a 10% more chance of trusting you to go out there and get a dub because Tr- Strickland keeps people working in that gym. Jordan Levitt, I've always been kind of high on his game. I thought he might be able to beat Patty. I think this is the matchup where he should be able to win. Then we've got the Brazilian Spider-Man. Michael Morales taking on Jake Matthews, co-main event, welterweight bout, Michael Morales undefeated, Jake Matthews kind of on a skid, he looked good, uh, was it earlier in the year or last year when he took out Andre Fialio, but then this year it's just kind of been rough, he does have the skills to do this, like I wouldn't count him out if it was me knowing Jake Matthews is coming in here at his best, I actually might even pick him, because Michael Morales is still young in his career, and we've seen some mistakes that if certain fighters capitalize on him, he's gonna get fucked up. But this isn't that fight, I don't think, and I think he's going to be confident. It also, it feels like a pseudo-Brazilian card, because there's just, like, Brazilian talent scattered throughout it. It's kind of like the fighters that couldn't make it onto last week came onto this one. I'm going to trust Michael Morales to take his spot in the moment, co-main event, and just honestly starts Jake Matthews. I think they're going to come out here both trying to do the same thing to each other, and it's going to be a first-round barn burner. And then we have the main event of the night, Brandon Allen taking on Paul Craig. This fight is really dope to me because I didn't trust either of them to take on Andrew Muniz. Especially not, I mean, Paul Craig, I was a little iffy because he already lost to Brandon Allen. But seeing Brandon Allen get moved to a main event and then uh, smoke Andre Muniz, that was just awesome, even though I picked against him. And honestly, I, I have to just trust Brandon Allen now because of this type of shit. Like, that's the theme of the card. Paul Craig, he looked great. He looked strong coming down to um to 85 which is something you don't see much but i still think that his chin is going to be trash if not worse moving down a weight class because even though you're not fighting as heavy of hitters you're you're draining yourself more you're going to have less uh you're going to have less water in your body your brain's going to be less cushioned i feel like this is the bro science of it obviously i don't know that shit like a doctor 
but yeah, no, I mean, and then what, where's Paul Craig going to be able to finish Brandon Allen in the fight? Probably not a knockout. It would most likely be something like on the ground. And I just, I actually think Brandon Allen is better than him on the ground because of his, how he's proven to get on top of people automatically put chokes in. Like with Paul Craig, it's like, oh shit, I'm losing the whole fight. I guess now I'll, I'll latch something up. So I just don't trust it against somebody like Brendan Allen. So we're going Brendan Allen, second round knockout. If you guys enjoy the predictions every week and the reactions, all the content, give me a sub, give me a like, and I'll just keep sitting here churning it out. I love y'all.